if a prisoner were to be actually given some special privilege mm -hmm. would be denied to somebody uh, if he or she actually belongs to a certain caste com uh, or a community which according to them should not be given that provision because they belong to a, a community which which is habitual to uh, commit crimes prison is divided the barracks inside the prison is actually divided as per the caste mm. so somebody who was who, who belongs to say a pallar caste which is a scheduled caste uh, would be uh, kept separately in a in a in a barrack he was from bihar but he was put in a, in a prison in rajasthan uh, then he was because he belonged to uh, 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 one a community from uh, from bihar which is a scheduled caste and he was asked to clean toilet there and and obviously like he was shocked that it happened to him it was inhuman and i met him like a couple of years after he was acquitted from the case but he was scarred still like he he could not believe that it could have happened to him hello and welcome to this special conversation for the wire i am janvi sen and with me is sukanya shanta she is a senior reporter with the wire based in bombay this morning the supreme court of india has given a very important judgment on a case where sukanya was the petitioner for a change the case pertain to the prison manuals that are in place across the country each state has its own and the caste discrimination that is inherent in these petitions a bench of chief justice of india uh, dy chandrachur and justices jb pardiwala and manoj mishra has ruled in, in favor of sukanya's petition and said that this discrimination is entirely unconstitutional we're going to talk a little bit about to sukanya about this petition and where it came from sukanya in starting from 2020 uh, we had done a series of stories on prisons and the various kinds of discriminations that are inherent in the indian prison system the first story that you had written for this was published in december 2020 and was on castes in prisons there, there were several other stories on uh, how transgender people are treated the discrimination against women people with women with children who gr grow up in prisons can you talk a little bit about the series that we had done yeah uh, so the series like yeah, you and i actually worked on the series together yeah. and uh, uh the series was uh, uh we had like five it was a five part series and it was done in uh, in support like with collaboration with the pulitzer center uh, for uh, crisis reporting yeah. uh this series looked at different aspects of prisons and uh, we tried to tell stories about prisons which are not usually out in the public domain uh the first story like you said like was was focusing primarily on the discriminatory practices the caste based discriminatory pra practices that have been continuing in the prisons of uh, the country uh, across all the prisons we see it um, and uh, the story uh, focused on the uh, the existence of prison manuals mm -hmm. of most states where uh, caste based labor division uh, caste based segregation and also caste based provisions where if a prisoner were to be actually given some special privilege mm -hmm. would be denied to somebody uh, if he or she actually belongs to a certain caste com uh, or a community which according to them should not be given that provision because they belong to a, a community which which is habitual to uh, uh, commit crimes uh, so so prison is is a is a is a state subject so every state actually comes up with its own prison manual and uh, uh if i were to like just cite a few examples so yeah. say mp rajasthan uh uh west bengal mm -hmm. uh some of the southern states very specifically mentions caste caste that actually belongs to uh, like that exist in those uh, in in that region so for example rajasthan mp uh chatisgarh uh up they mention caste like uh, uh the mehtar community uh they they uh, they mention like jatav community uh communities that uh, are sh are which fall which are classified under uh, as as cla as scheduled caste so it's very specifically says that these are the communities which have, have uh, which are uh, uh, are as supposed to actually carry out uh, menial jobs inside the prison so uh, maybe say uh, cleaning of toilets right. uh, manual scavenging uh, uh, plumbing work then Uh, uh if somebody from a barber caste like it mentions like naik community mm -hmm. should actually be uh, doing like hair cutting or shaving ka kaam uh, shaving work in the prison uh similarly uh while it is actually assigning menial jobs to communities which are very clearly like the scheduled caste yeah. uh there are some jobs which they feel is a little more uh uh refined pure prestigious in the prison and that work has to be done by people belonging to the higher caste so it it very specifically says like people belonging to the brahmin community will uh, go on uh, maybe say like uh, 
uh, having like a kind like just just ha- handling the job of cooking in the prison right or maybe like uh, handling the library or handling uh, in the jail you have like uh, for ut section and like you under trial section or for the convicts you have like a certain area where the administrative work is carried mm-hmm. out so prison prisoners from those communities can actually uh, help and support and carry out the work there uh, that that is about the uh, the caste based uh, division of labor uh, there is another problem uh, that we uh, came across is about caste based segregation so now caste based segregation is something that we saw in, in some prisons of tamil nadu especially in the southern part of tamil nadu where uh, where uh, caste conflicts are very common uh, in these prisons like especially like for example i focused in that story uh, on palam kottai uh, prison that is in the southern part of tamil nadu where a uh, prison is divided the barracks inside the prison is actually divided as per the caste mm. so somebody who was who who belongs to say a pallar caste which is a scheduled caste uh, would be uh, kept separately in a in a in a barrack from uh, people belonging to say a uh, 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 nadar community or or uh, a dewar community and those communities are while they are like an obc caste they uh, they are considered to be a lot more dominant in that space and that segregation has been continuing in this prison uh, the segregation was challenged in the high court and the high court had actually uh, uh, had had agreed with the uh, the rationale behind those uh, segregation high court uh, madras high court and the practice continued with the high court's order uh, the third aspect that we looked at which was not covered in the series was about the denotified community the vimukta community uh, when i did the research for that uh, for that story uh, i somehow missed uh, it uh, in the in the series but but later when we continued uh, actually working on it we realized that there are a lot of provisions like which which speaks about uh, which prisoner can be actually moved to an open prison there are, there is something like open prison in right. in most states so it says that okay a prisoner who has like had good conduct uh, who is who is who is abiding uh, the, all the rules and laws of the of the prison uh but the prisoner should not be a habitual offender mm-hmm. or from wandering caste wandering tribe and now who is a, who who belongs to wandering tribe so that's 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 like that, that's a denotified community a community that that has been like uh, has historically been criminalized so so these are the provisions that we actually came across uh in some states like maharashtra you don't find these problems yet the prison actually uh, has Uh, 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 been practicing caste space uh, like labor uh, labor practice that's continuing in this in most prisons of uh, Maharashtra. Uh, we found same thing happening in Telangana. We found it in Andhra. We found it in Odisha. So, regardless of which prison manual actually mentions these things, like we found, like those practices are still actually uh, right. prevalent in these spaces. So yeah, so that's 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 what the story actually uh, uh, focused on. Uh, the story. the first impact yeah. uh, like if we were to look at the impact a bit uh, came out soon after the story was uh, published and the first story actually focused on uh, the first case story that uh, that we had actually written in that story focused on this one very young prisoner from rajasthan yeah. uh, who 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 was uh, uh, i think he had actually like uh, he he was wrongly implicated in a case of theft case and how he ended up in the prison and he was from bihar but he was put in in a prison in rajasthan uh then he was because he belonged to uh, uh uh one a community from uh, from bihar which is a scheduled caste and he was asked to clean toilet there and and obviously like he was shocked that it happened to him it was inhuman and i met him like a couple of years after he was acquitted from the case but he was scarred still like he he could not believe that it could have happened to him so that story uh because it focused so much on rajasthan the the jodhpur bench of the rajasthan high court actually so more to picked it up and uh, Uh, for the first time in 75 years the prison manual of rajasthan was changed yeah so that was the first like success right. that we actually saw and then we realized okay fine that the court passed an order mm. uh, so moto and then the rajasthan home department was also like uh, it had to it mm. it was pressurized enough to actually change the law yeah uh, the rule which was which was uh, which existed for so long so yeah that's that's the uh, yeah. uh, that's how it actually Yeah, yeah and so yeah as we were saying the story was published in december 2020 and then the rajasthan high court took action and we could see visible change but it's not often that journalists who are reporting on any sort of injustice actually take the matter to court themselves as a petitioner so can you talk a little bit about the trajectory of how that happened how this mm-hmm. uh, story then became a petition that you filed in december 2023 and 
what happened in the middle so yeah like the story happened in 2020 december and the petition happened 3 years later yeah in those 3 years i was hoping that something actually works out on its own maybe like uh, states actually bring in like some changes uh, see like as as reporters our only greed is like whatever we are reporting will actually have some impact mm-hmm. and a substantial impact was seen in rajasthan but that was one state uh, in other states like in goa we they did actually like very silently change the law they did that but but it was not happening pan india and the issue was a pan india issue uh, there are like a couple of organizations which work on prisons and uh, uh, informally i was having this conversation with them because most of them do actually do a lot of advocacy work directly with the home department uh, uh, they do file petitions very often uh, reporters like you said like do not really go to courts yeah. but somehow i just realized that caste is something that is not like a uh, it it is absent from the prison discourse from the carceral system that when you talk about uh, the carceral system like it it somehow is missed out uh, in in at least in, in in indian context so it was not something that i i could not really find like uh, people readily wanting to take it up uh, but i clearly knew that like this is something that the courts will actually how can a court say that okay fine this practice can go on like you know that like courts will not say something like this so we knew like courts will eventually like if we actually go to the court like it will intervene and the states will be like compelled to actually make the changes so so yeah like in the beginning like i was uh, my my lawyer disha wadekar who is who is actually like helping in in the whole drafting in 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 shaping this entire uh, case uh disha and i like actually would discuss this we would discuss about different strategies how we could actually go about initially we thought like we could just write letters to all this uh, cjs and say like okay fine this is the story which is well uh, uh, documented and we have evidence to actually show it then we realized if we were to write the letter the letter is going to be anyway just as exhaustive a work as a petition and we might not be like able to like actually write it pan india so then we just like at one point and she is a, a lawyer who is practicing in supreme court we just said like let us just file a petition and that uh, work for petition actually began somewhere like last year mid mid last year uh, while we were doing that the whole bit about like vimukta community the denotified community that i mentioned that is something that we came across then so we just realized okay the story needs to be expanded even further and let us just do that and then uh, because of disha like disha actually like spoke to uh, prasanna who is who is uh, the uh, advocate on the record in this case as prasanna and then um, uh, justice uh, retired justice murli uh, sir like who who pro bono actually decided to take this case up so we then like actually had like a good team coming up mm-hmm. together and uh, yes the petition was heard before the court yes. yeah yeah and today was really a very positive and landmark judgment Absolutely, yeah. uh, from from the judges and so i think we should break down the, what the judges said it, a little bit a lot of it was taken from your petition and as well as from the suggestions you had submitted to the court so one part of it was uh, obviously on the labor practices and the segregation which the court talked about and expressed shock that these practices were continuing and that even though the 2016 model prison manual which the union government has come up with as a model for the states does not have these practices in them it also doesn't do anything to mitigate them so what did the judges say on these can you break that down a little So yeah, like as in uh, all the prayers that we had uh, put forth, uh, the court has accepted them all. Uh, the court has so unconstitutional practices which were continuing in prisons for so long. The court had to once again call them unconstitutional and had right. as asked them to like actually get rid of them. Uh, the court has uh, it's it's a time bound thing. The court has actually asked them to uh, uh, do away with it within three months. and a compliance report has to be filed before the court uh, the court has also uh, looked at all the constitutional provisions and has spoken about like how uh, untouchability discrimination uh, uh, right to life right to dignity like it has focused on all those aspects like uh, uh, article uh, 14 15 16 20, 20, 20 21 23 23 it has actually focused on all of them and uh, categorically asked each of these uh, uh, states to do away with it also directed the union government to uh, send the order the order copy like it's mm-hmm. it's just come like it's in 130 pages order copy uh, to all the chief justices across the state and uh, has like there is there is so much emphasis that has been actually put on the uh, on, on the on the condition of the uh, denotified communities yes uh, 
that's that's that i think like is 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 a big success uh, of mm-hmm. this uh, petition i would say like caste based discrimination is something that we were able to address directly also because the petition uh, because the uh, provisions were mentioned in the in the in the, uh, in the prison manuals uh, but the discrimination against the denotified communities uh, is not so direct Hmm. like uh, there there is very blanket mention of habitual offenders in some provisions for example now habitual offenders can be anybody can be you and i who are booked uh, under like multiple cases right but we also know it is not you not and i likely to be yeah right. and and it is it is like a community which gets targeted very easily which has multiple cases against them uh, regardless of their involvement in those cases and they end up in prison a lot more than people from the savarna communities so uh, the court has actually paid a lot of attention on that has actually fo- uh, uh, reiterated that arnish kumar's judgment on, on uh, arnish kumar's judgment and a couple more judgments it has mentioned saying that uh, the police are bound to actually follow the like so it's, it's more more like reiterating uh, mm-hmm. the existing uh, the judgments which which is very easily violated and which is which is which is very obviously violated for so many years so it mentions that and it also uh, now the like the order today uh, also meant that like the 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 petition that we filed has been disposed of right. but now the court has actually kept it open now the reason for keeping it open is also because uh, we know the discrimination has been happening whether or not these states actually have these discriminatory provisions like this discrimination has been continuing maybe the the report our report actually like speaks about a lot of discrimination but maybe we've not actually uh, managed to bring in all all aspects and it 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 acknowledges the fact that there can be discrimination on the basis of not just on the basis of caste and identities but gender uh, then disability is another thing aspect that like it spoke about so they have kept it open they have actually expanded the whole scope of the existing petition and now has converted it in so more to converted it into an open petition and for like that actually gives us a lot more leeway to keep working on this yes. finding new aspects of discrimination and as and when it comes uh, like we come to we come across it like it can be brought before the court so so that's another thing uh, it is also spoken about like some like a, a part of the judgment was was pronounced while while pronounced in the court like the uh, justice chandrachud actually mentioned let it out so it also speaks about uh, setting up a committee it also mentions about board of visitors uh, visit in the court uh, in the prisons and it also uh, has given uh, uh, assigned specific tasks to the uh, to to the uh, legal aids uh, the state legal aid cells so a lot of uh, things have been covered in this judgment since i have not like read the judgment uh, yeah, uh, like closely, uh, yeah. yeah closely so wouldn't really know like the provisions but the things that they, they spoke looks pretty much everything has been uh, covered in this uh, judgment yes yeah yeah and i think yeah like like you said the fact that they've kept it open does leave a lot of scope for more research for hopefully more positive change in a variety of uh, ways what do you think do you think this has a larger lesson for how journalism can be used so i think like in our journalism school we are told that we are journalists and we are not activists yeah. right and and uh, that's something that we keep like it's hr yeah 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 we don't want to uh, become one but we do want our stories to be uh, to actually have a certain kind of impact hmm. as in uh, how does it otherwise matter like if somebody is reading and like forgetting about it and especially human rights violation uh, prisons is not a space that is actually so extensively covered uh in india it's difficult it's yeah. difficult as in like you you don't have access to prisons and you don't even have the wherewithal to actually do these kind of stories so in this case like as in like and 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 i like we been journalists for so so many years like this this perhaps like the only time like we actually had the courage to yeah. say okay fine we'll move to the court so yeah like as in and a very positive uh, yeah. response from the court so maybe like it's time for us to like actually find ways of if we are looking for impact a judicial impact is also something that is that is something that needs to be covered so maybe like perhaps there are, there are ways that one can actually go find a way uh, to have a judicial intervention if in my case like i became a petitioner simply because i uh, it was becoming very difficult to actually have a a a, a incarcerated person or maybe a formerly incarcerated person or to, person to become a petitioner because right. the threat perception there is like much, much higher yeah. and did did like actually work on finding a petitioner for a very long time and when i realized that it's not happening 
uh, then the suggestions from the lawyers came that no you can actually become a petition mm-hmm. then you you have actually worked on this uh so maybe Something like that was recognized by the court as well when yeah, they said that it did happen it was a really well researched petition yeah, yeah 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 so then so maybe in this case like i had to become a petitioner because there was no other way of doing mm-hmm. this but like one can actually look at that as also a strategy to like mm-hmm. have like it, it can be a strategy to actually bring an impact in the in the case maybe perhaps yeah yeah thank you so much for this thank you thank you janvi thank you and thank you for watching i'd encourage you to read this series and sukanya's work particularly on caste in prisons thank you <laughs>